The wet mop hit the floor with a soft thud and swished across the smooth, polished surface of the corridor. The office's dim lighting cast long, wavering shadows in the early hours, creating a serene, almost surreal atmosphere. Lily, her hair neatly tied in a ponytail, was dressed in her crisp, blue uniform, diligently mopping the floors. She moved rhythmically, lost in the world of her earphones where upbeat music played, infusing her with energy and keeping her spirits high. She had arrived at work at 5 a.m. this morning, starting her day with a burst of productivity. By now, she had already finished dusting the tables in the various office rooms, methodically wiping away every speck of dust from their polished surfaces. Finishing the office spaces early brought Lily a sense of relief. It meant she could avoid the usual hustle and bustle of the day, and more importantly, escape the uncomfortable gazes of the workers that often lingered a bit too long. As she moved the wet mop across the glossy floor, Lily noticed a flicker of light from behind. Her heart skipped a beat as she quickly took off her earphones and turned around, her eyes scanning the dimly lit corridor. Good morning, kiddo, a hoarse voice echoed through the hallway, breaking the silence. Lily's tense shoulders relaxed as soon as she recognized the voice. It was Mr. Holland, the elderly security guard, standing by the doorway with his usual stoic expression. Do you even sleep, Lily? Seems like you're always here, bright and early, Mr. Holland remarked, a hint of concern in his gravelly voice. Lily smiled warmly and straightened up, pausing her mopping. She wiped a bead of sweat from her forehead and replied, Good morning, Mr. Holland. Oh, I get plenty of sleep. I just prefer to get things done before the office gets busy, you know? It's easier to work without everyone around. I hope I didn't wake you, sir. I'm sorry if I did. Mr. Holland shook his head, a faint smile on his weathered face. Not at all, Lily. I couldn't sleep anyway. Comes with age. You'll understand someday. Mr. Holland kept his hands casually tucked in his pockets, his gaze following Lily as she meticulously worked the floor. The rhythmic sound of the mop provided a soft background to the otherwise quiet hallway. You remind me of my Susan. She was an early bird, too. By the time I'd drag myself out of bed, breakfast was always on the table and the house... It was spotless, Mr. Holland reminisced, his voice trailing off as he got lost in his memories. Lily paused her mopping, leaning on the mop handle as she turned to face Mr. Holland. Her expression softened with sympathy. She had heard stories about Susan and knew how much Mr. Holland missed his wife. It had been a tough year for him since his wife succumbed to a severe bout of pneumonia. They had shared more than 45 years together, a lifetime of memories and love. Lily offered a playful smile. Seems like someone skipped breakfast this morning. Let me just finish up here, and we can share the tuna sandwiches I brought. At the mention of tuna sandwiches, Mr. Holland's eyes immediately lit up. He hadn't eaten since last night. His appetite often waned in the quiet solitude of his home. He knew he was in for a treat. Lily always seemed to have something delicious with her. Mr. Holland admired her for many things, not least her thoughtful organization. Soon, they were sitting side by side on the freshly cleaned floor, warming their hands on cups of tea poured from Lily's thermos. As they enjoyed the sandwiches, Mr. Holland began to recount one of his many stories from his days in the Marines. Lily always looked forward to hearing Mr. Holland's stories. They were not just captivating tales filled with adventure and life lessons, but she knew they also brought him comfort, easing the loneliness that often clouded his days. As for Mr. Holland, Sharing these stories made him feel valued and alive. In fact, it was one of these very stories that had originally drawn Lily to this job. Lily had been working at this mid sized IT company for three months now, her role seemingly simple as a cleaning lady, but she carried it out with pride and diligence. Her journey to this point had been marked by a poignant past. Growing up in a small town, Lily's life took a tragic turn when she was just 14, her parents and her little sister, Julia, were involved in a horrific car accident. While Lily lost her parents that day, 
Julia, who was only four years old, miraculously survived after doctors fought tirelessly to save her. However, the joy of Julia's survival was tempered by the news that she would be wheelchair-bound for life due to severe spinal injuries sustained in the crash. The aftermath of the accident left Lily reeling with grief and the overwhelming responsibility of caring for her young sister. In their time of need, their grandmother Grace stepped in, offering a haven for the two distraught girls. At the tender age of 14, Lily swiftly adapted to the realities of caring for a baby. She embraced the role of both sister and mother figure to Julia, learning the intricacies of childcare with a maturity far beyond her years. Their grandmother, Grace, did her best to provide for them, working tirelessly to support her granddaughters. Lily, recognizing the need to help at home, made the difficult decision to drop out of school to dedicate herself fully to Julia's care. Despite the hardships, Lily found joy and fulfillment in her life with Julia. Their bond grew stronger with each passing day. When Grace eventually retired, she insisted that Lily return to school to continue her education, promising to take over the care of Julia at home. Lily excelled in her studies, standing out as an exceptional student. She was acutely aware that the future held the responsibility of caring for both Julia and her grandmother, Grace, and she approached her education with this in mind. While her peers were caught up in the excitement of prom, splurging on dresses and reveling in teenage rites of passage, Lily found herself immersed in a different world. She diligently explored the vast expanse of free online courses, seizing any opportunity to expand her knowledge and skills. As high school graduation approached, the buzz among her classmates was palpable. The girls chattered excitedly about the upcoming graduation party, spending weekends hunting for the perfect dresses. Others were busy scouring college and university websites, dreaming of their future academic endeavors. For Lily, however, such luxuries were out of reach. The financial constraints of her family meant that attending college or even purchasing a dress for the graduation was simply unfeasible. More importantly, she couldn't imagine leaving her grandmother and Julia without her support. Her path was clear. She needed to find a job immediately after graduation. Finding her first job was a challenge for Lily, given her lack of specific professional skills and limited network of acquaintances. Eventually, she landed a position at the warehouse of a retail store. The job was physically demanding, requiring her to stack various packages onto their designated shelves. Despite the challenges, the pay was decent, enough to cover their household expenses. What Lily particularly appreciated about this job was its schedule. It began at 9 a.m., and often she could leave as soon as she finished her tasks, which was usually around 3 p.m. This allowed her to return home early, where she would help her grandmother with cooking dinner and attend to other household chores. On the days when the warehouse job wasn't as demanding, Lily cherished the extra hours she could spend with Julia. She turned these moments into opportunities for her sister's education and growth. Lily would stop by the local library on her way home, her backpack often bulging with an eclectic mix of books. From illustrated children's stories to basic science and math workbooks. At home, she and Julia would settle in their cozy living room, a space filled with warmth and the soft hum of everyday life. There, Lily would patiently read aloud, her voice animating the characters and bringing the stories to life. Julia, with her eyes wide with wonder, would listen intently, her imagination ignited by the tales of adventure, magic, and far-off lands. But it wasn't just about storytelling. Lily also guided Julia through the exercise books, explaining basic concepts in a way that made them easy to understand. She created little games and quizzes to make learning fun and engaging for Julia, who, despite her physical limitations, showed a keen interest and a quick mind. These sessions were more than educational. They were a testament to the sisters' unbreakable bond. For Lily, these moments were precious, a chance to give Julia the childhood experiences she deserved. For Julia, these were times of joy and discovery, 
a chance to see the world beyond the confines of her limitations through the eyes of her beloved sister. Lily couldn't help but feel a pang of envy and self-consciousness when she heard her friends talk about their college experiences. They shared stories of making new friends, attending classes, and the general excitement of campus life. Listening to them, she often felt a sense of embarrassment, acutely aware of how different her path was compared to theirs. While they were navigating the adventures of higher education, Lily was juggling work and family responsibilities, seemingly worlds apart from the typical young adult experience. At 12 years old, Julia had become quite tech-savvy, spending her free time exploring the digital world from her computer at home. One day, she noticed that Lily seemed unusually downcast. Concerned, Julia asked what was wrong. Lily confided in her sister, sharing her fears of being stuck in physically demanding jobs indefinitely. She longed for something more, a career that was not just a job, but a profession she could own and be proud of. That's when Julia, with a spark of inspiration, introduced Lily to a website that taught programming in an unconventional way. It's like learning through playing games, Julia explained with an enthusiastic smile. The website was designed to make programming accessible and fun, a concept that immediately intrigued Lily. Curious, Lily sat down at the computer and tried out the programming game. The interactive challenges, cleverly disguised as games, captivated her. It was a perfect blend of learning and entertainment, and before she knew it, Lily was hooked. From that day forward, Lily's free time transformed. She was often found in front of the computer, deeply engrossed in solving programming tasks presented by the game. Her dedication paid off quickly. Within several months, she had grasped the basics of programming. This newfound skill and passion led her to discover a free online course, which she eagerly enrolled in to further her knowledge. For two years, Lily's routine remained unchanged. She worked diligently at the warehouse, a job that, while physically demanding, provided stability for her and her family. Each evening, after returning home, she would quickly shift gears, cooking, attending to household chores, and then dedicating herself to her programming studies. It was a grueling schedule, but Lily managed it with unwavering determination. The warehouse business began to grow, leading to an increase in the workload. The job now frequently involved handling and lifting heavy boxes. One fateful day, as Lily reached to place a box on a high shelf, she felt a sharp, excruciating pain in her back. The box fell to the ground as she clutched her spine, the pain overwhelming her. Concerned about the injury, Lily underwent an MRI. The results, however, brought distressing news. The doctors informed her that one of the discs in her spine had cracked, likely due to the repetitive strain of lifting heavy objects. They advised her that for the next few years, she must avoid lifting anything heavier than 22 pounds to prevent further damage. This development was a significant setback for Lily. Not only did it impact her ability to work at the warehouse, but it also posed new challenges in her day-to-day -day life. She found herself facing the harsh reality of her physical limitations, a situation that mirrored her sisters in a way she never expected. Lily found herself at a crossroads. Her recent injury meant that jobs involving heavy lifting were no longer an option. While house cleaning positions were less physically demanding, such opportunities were scarce in her small town. At the same time, Lily had honed her programming skills considerably. She knew that some eight-hour drive away, in the nearest city, there might be opportunities for her in the tech industry. Yet the thought of leaving her sister and grandmother behind was unbearable. She was torn, caught in an internal struggle, unsure of which path to take. Grace, ever perceptive, noticed Lily's dilemma. One evening, after Lily returned from a contemplative walk, she was greeted by an unexpected but heartwarming sight. Grace and Julia had set the dinner table neatly, adorning it with fresh fruits and a homemade meal, filling the room with inviting aromas. 
They greeted her with warm smiles, beckoning her to join them. As they settled down for dinner, Grace broke the silence. Lily, I want you to know how much I love you, she began, her voice filled with emotion. I've watched you grow and mature into a remarkable young woman. You've shouldered so much, more than anyone your age should. Julia, who had been listening intently, maneuvered her wheelchair closer to Lily. She reached out, giving her sister a gentle hug. I love you so much, Lily, she said softly. You've worked tirelessly to take care of us, and I can't tell you how much I respect and appreciate everything you've done. This moment had been carefully planned by Grace and Julia. They knew Lily was wrestling with a tough decision, and they wanted her to feel their love and support, hoping it would give her the strength to make the choice that was best for her future. Lily sat at the dinner table, a mix of confusion and surprise on her face. Why all the formality tonight? She asked, looking from Grace to Julia. It was then that Grace took a deep breath and shared their decision. We've been talking, Lily, and we want to bless your journey. It's time for you to go to the city and find your future, she said gently. Don't worry about us. We'll manage. The words hit Lily like a wave. Tears welled up in her eyes as the reality of their words sank in. She was overwhelmed by their support and sacrifice. But I can't just leave you two, she stammered, her voice choked with emotion. Julia, with a reassuring smile, added, You don't have to carry all this burden alone. We'll be okay. You need to think about your future, too. Lily made a heartfelt promise that night. She vowed to find a job in the city and do everything in her power to one day bring them there with her. The following morning, as Lily rolled her suitcase to the door, she noticed Grace in the backyard. Her grandmother was carefully picking flowers, assembling them into a beautiful bouquet. Seeing Lily, Grace approached with a tender smile, handing her the bouquet and planting a loving kiss on her forehead. In her other hand, she held an envelope, her savings, which she insisted Lily take. For your new start, she said softly. Good luck, my dear. Upon arriving in the bustling city, Lily found a modest room in a humble neighborhood. It was a stark contrast to her small town, but she was determined to make it her new home. With a mix of excitement and nervousness, she sat down at her small desk, her laptop open in front of her, and began to craft her resume. Lily poured her heart into that document, detailing her self-taught programming skills, her work ethic, and her determination to succeed. She was hopeful, yet she couldn't help but feel a bit daunted by the city's competitive job market. As she browsed through job listings, she saw positions being filled almost as quickly as they were posted. Her optimism was certainly tested during this period, as the reality of the challenging job hunt in a big city began to set in. Lily's struggle in the face of educational barriers is a compelling aspect of her journey. The most significant hurdle Lily faced was her lack of formal higher education. In her small town, her self-taught skills and strong work ethic had been enough, but the city's job market was far less forgiving. Each company she applied to seemed to zero in on the same gap in her resume, her educational background. During interviews, when Lily explained that she was self-taught, having learned programming through free online courses, she often encountered skepticism. We've seen a lot of self-taught candidates, they'd say with a dismissive shrug. They often lack the depth of knowledge we need. These responses were disheartening, chipping away at her confidence. A month passed in this way, with Lily sending out her resume to countless companies and attending several interviews. Yet the result was always the same. Rejection. It seemed no one was willing to take a chance on a girl who had come from a small town, new to both the city and the industry, with no formal college education. Just as Lily was nearing the point of resigning to her fate and considering a return to her village, a glimmer of hope appeared. She stumbled upon an advertisement from a company openly seeking beginners for a programming position. 
her spirits immediately lifted. This could be her chance, she thought. Fueled by a mix of desperation and hope, she quickly made her way to the company's address, her mind racing with all the things she would say to convince them she was more than just a beginner. Upon reaching the building, her brisk steps came to a halt as she was greeted by an elderly security guard in uniform. He looked at her with a mix of sympathy and resignation. As Lily attempted to step past him, he spoke up. They've already hired someone, kiddo. You're the seventh person to come by. I'm really sorry. Lily paused, confusion washing over her. Excuse me? She asked, her heart sinking. The guard nodded solemnly. For the job, right? They just filled the position. Told me to not let anyone else in for interviews. Lily felt her heart plummet. She was too late. The weight of disappointment pressed down on her as she trudged towards the exit, her steps heavy with defeat. Just as she was about to step through the door, the old security guard called out to her. Hey, kid, they're looking for a janitor. Would you consider that? She paused and offered a weary smile. No, thank you, she replied politely, her voice tinged with resignation. The old man nodded understandingly. Well, all right then. Good luck to you, kid. Lily took a few steps forward, but then something shifted within her. A slow smile began to spread across her face. She turned back to the security guard, her smile now beaming with a newfound realization. She briskly walked back to him and extended her hand in a firm handshake. You, sir, are a blessing, Lily said, her eyes sparkling with gratitude. I'm Lily, by the way. The old man, now identified as Peter Holland, looked back at her, his brows knitted in confusion. He couldn't fathom what had suddenly made her so happy. I'm Peter, Peter Holland, he replied, his tone laced with curiosity. Realizing the opportunity that lay before her, Lily felt a wave of gratitude towards the old security guard. She engaged him in conversation, asking if he had mentioned the janitorial position to the other candidates who had come for the programming job. Peter shook his head. Honestly, I didn't even think of it until I saw you, he admitted. Feeling a surge of warmth towards this kind stranger, Lily asked, would it be okay if I gave you a hug? With a gentle nod from Peter, they shared a brief, heartfelt embrace. Lily stepped back, her face lit up with hope. She recognized that even a janitorial position in the company could be a stepping stone. It would give her a chance to be on the inside, to meet people, and perhaps, in time, demonstrate her programming skills. In her mind, it was a brilliant strategy a foot in the door to the world she longed to be a part of. Yet, as she contemplated this new plan, Lily couldn't help but wonder what lay ahead. She was stepping into uncharted territory, unaware of the challenges and opportunities that awaited her in this new role. Finley, the owner of the mid-sized firm, conducted Lily's interview personally. He believed in meeting each of his employees, a testament to his hands-on approach in his business. Finley was an imposing figure, both in personality and appearance. A stout, tall man, with a demeanor that somehow combined authority and kindness, he often reminded people of a bear, formidable yet approachable. During the interview, Finley inquired about Lily's experience in similar roles. She answered honestly, explaining that while this would be her first job as a janitor, her time at the warehouse had familiarized her with the rigors of physical labor. Finley seemed to appreciate her straightforwardness and the confident way she presented herself. As the interview drew to a close, Lily toyed with the idea of mentioning her programming skills. However, she hesitated, fearing it might give the impression that she wasn't genuinely interested in the janitorial position. She decided against it, choosing to focus on securing the job at hand. When Finley offered her the position, Lily accepted with a sense of relief and gratitude. The past month had been tough, with her savings gradually depleting. Now, with this job, even though it was as a janitor, she felt a weight lift off her shoulders. It was a start, 
a foothold in a company where she could potentially explore her passion for programming in the future. Finley, with his easygoing demeanor, steered the conversation into more casual territory. He asked Lily about her hometown, showing genuine interest. Lily, cautious about revealing too much of her personal life, gave him a general overview. To her surprise, Finley was familiar with the town. He shared a fond memory of fishing there with his son, adding a personal touch to their conversation. Their chat was interrupted when the door cracked open. Lily glanced over to see a woman peering in. Their eyes met, and Lily immediately felt a prick of discomfort under the woman's scrutinizing gaze. Mr. Powell, should I set the meeting with Intera for the 25th? The woman asked, her tone professional. Yes, that works. Thanks, Sandra, Finley replied without missing a beat. The woman, Sandra, who Lily would later learn was Finley's secretary, seemed slightly flustered. I'm sorry for interrupting. I didn't realize you were in an interview. She must have walked past my desk when I was away, she said, a hint of apology in her voice. Finley waved it off. It's fine, Sandra. This is Lily, our new janitor. He introduced her, turning towards Lily with a smile. Sandra's expression shifted subtly when she looked at Lily. There was a flash of something, irritation perhaps, that she quickly masked. Lily couldn't be sure, but she sensed that Sandra wasn't thrilled about her presence. It seemed Sandra had interrupted them under the pretense of confirming a meeting date, perhaps spurred by curiosity upon hearing laughter from Finley's office. And now, seeing Lily, young and attractive, her annoyance seemed to deepen. Lily quickly sensed that Sandra had taken an instant disliking to her, seemingly determined to make her feel unwelcome in the new environment, as Lily stepped out of Finlay's office, she was greeted by Sandra's raised eyebrow and crossed arms, an unspoken signal of the secretary's disdain. Come with me, I'll show you around, Sandra said, her voice tinged with forced politeness. Lily followed, trying to maintain a sense of professionalism despite the chilly reception. As they walked through the office, Sandra rattled off information about Lily's janitorial duties. Her tone was patronizing, each word laced with arrogance, as if to underline the disparity between their positions. Lily listened quietly, nodding where appropriate, but she couldn't help feeling the sting of Sandra's attitude. It was clear that Sandra saw her as an intruder, an unwelcome addition to the office. Despite this, Lily resolved to stay focused on her goals. She reminded herself that this job was a stepping stone, a means to an end. She wouldn't let Sandra's behavior deter her from her path. Lily quickly settled into her role at the office, adopting a strategy to be as efficient and unobtrusive as possible. She worked swiftly and quietly, ensuring that her presence didn't disrupt the flow of the workplace. After completing her tasks, she found a quiet corner in the hall where she could immerse herself in her studies or lose herself in a book. Whenever there was a coffee spill in the hallway or a mess in the kitchen, she promptly attended to it with a quiet efficiency. Her approach didn't go unnoticed. Colleagues began to remark on how the office always seemed to be spotlessly clean, yet they rarely saw Lily at work. There was a growing sense of appreciation and curiosity about how she managed to keep everything in such pristine condition without drawing attention to herself. Finley, in particular, was impressed with Lily's work. He noticed her dedication and her tendency to keep to herself. On several occasions, he saw her sitting quietly in a secluded corner of the office, absorbed in a book. Each time, he couldn't help but smile in approval before continuing on his way. Lily's discreet presence and her commitment to her job were exactly what he valued in an employee. Sandra seemed to relish in making Lily's work life-challenging. She frequently devised petty ways to cause trouble for her, adding an unnecessary layer of stress to Lily's daily routine. Despite this, Lily tried her best to stay facusit and not let Sandra's behavior affect her. Outside their office building, there was a high-end clothing store that often caught Lily's eye. 
She would occasionally pause in front of the store, captivated by a particular dress displayed in the window. It was a beautiful piece, navy blue in color, with a unique design that was short in the front to reveal the knees and elegantly long in the back. Lily couldn't help but dream about wearing such a dress. She remembered her high school graduation, a time when even a simple dress was a luxury she couldn't afford. Now, standing in front of the window, she allowed herself a moment of escapism, imagining how she would look and feel in that dress, walking confidently as people turned to admire her. However, each time she peered at the price tag, reality came crashing back. The dress cost as much as her monthly rent and living expenses combined. The disparity between her aspirations and her financial constraints was a stark reminder of the challenges she still faced. Caught in her daydreams, Lily didn't notice Sandra approaching with a group of colleagues until it was too late. They appeared to be heading out for lunch when Sandra, ever eager to belittle Lily, seized the opportunity. Well, well, well. Look who's dreaming about a Versace dress. Keep walking, honey. It's way out of your league, Sandra sneered, her words dripping with condescension. A few of Sandra's companions forced out awkward chuckles, more out of obligation than amusement. They knew Sandra held considerable sway over Finley's decisions in the office. Aligning with her, despite her mean-spirited nature, was a tactic they used to secure their own positions. Sandra's constant jibes were precisely why Lily had adjusted her schedule to come in early and leave as soon as her work was done. This change in routine led to her spending more time with Mr. Holland, the security guard. Their early morning chats had blossomed into a genuine friendship, offering Lily a much-needed respite from the unpleasantness she faced from Sandra. Finley was not oblivious to Sandra's behavior. He had noticed her condescending attitude and had cautioned her to tone it down on multiple occasions. However, he continued to employ her because, despite her arrogance, she was competent in her role. Finley valued efficiency and effectiveness in his employees, but he also cared about maintaining a positive work environment. Known for being a considerate boss, Finley often organized team-building activities. With the arrival of spring, he planned a picnic in the nearby woods. The announcement, made during a company meeting one morning, was met with enthusiastic applause. The team was excited about the opportunity to bond outside of the office. Lily, finishing her cleaning duties, heard the roar of excitement from the conference room. She couldn't help but smile at the sense of camaraderie within the company. She assumed she wasn't included in these company events, given her position, and continued with her work. However, Finley, ever the inclusive leader, noticed Lily's absence in the meeting. He peered through the conference room's blurry window, spotting her silhouette in the hall. Excusing himself from the still buzzing crowd, he stepped out to speak with her. Lily, you're invited too. You're part of our company, just like everybody else, he said, his smile genuine and warm. Lily felt a blush rise to her cheeks at Finley's personal invitation. Am I really? Oh, thank you so much, she responded, her voice tinged with surprise and gratitude. It meant a lot to her that Finley considered her an integral part of the team, despite her role as a janitor. Lily sat quietly in the lunch area, her sandwich half-eaten, her thoughts elsewhere. Mr. Holland, ever observant, noticed her unusual demeanor. He approached her with a concerned look. Are you all right, kiddo? You seem a bit down today, he inquired, his voice gentle. Lily offered a small, distracted smile. Oh, it's nothing major, Mr. Holland. I was invited to a team-building event with everyone from the office, she shared, trying to sound more upbeat than she felt. That sounds wonderful. Isn't it good to feel included? Mr. Holland replied, encouragingly. Lily sighed, a hint of reluctance in her voice. I thought so too, at first, but Sandra will be there. She always finds a way to make things difficult for me. I'm worried she won't let me enjoy the event. Mr. Holland nodded understandingly. Listen, Lily, 
You're giving her too much power over your happiness. Don't let her presence stop you from having a good time. Go there, enjoy the nature, walk along the stream, breathe in the fresh air. Just relax and be yourself. You deserve to enjoy this event as much as anyone else. That day, all the colleagues were gathering at the office, sharing jokes and laughter, eagerly waiting for everyone to arrive so they could start their journey. In a surprising turn of events, Sandra didn't tease Lily, her usual target. Instead, she occasionally cast malicious glances at Lily and whispered to her office girlfriends. Amidst this, Lily found a peaceful spot on the lawn and basked in the sun. Before long, Finley's car turned the corner and came into view. He parked and stepped out, not alone, but accompanied by a little boy around three years old. The sight of the child caught Lily's attention, who observed the boy being left under Sandra's care while Finley briefly returned to the office. Sandra, caught up in conversation with her friends, seemed to forget about the child, who began wandering towards the lawn. Suddenly, a stray dog, intently searching under a tree, caught the boy's attention. The boy, delighted, shouted, Dog! and ran towards it without a hint of fear. The situation escalated rapidly. The dog, startled and growling menacingly, lunged at the boy. In an instant, Lily was at the boy's side, scooping him up in her arms. The dog, angered by the interference, viciously bit Lily's leg. Despite the pain, she held tightly to the child. The dog, persistent and aggressive, leaped up in an attempt to bite her arm and knock her down. Lily, amidst this chouse, could only scream for the dog to get away. As the commotion unfolded, men from their office, along with Finley, dashed towards the scene. The dog, sensing the imminent danger from the approaching group, decided to make a hasty retreat. Tail tucked, it scampered away, leaving Lily alone with the child. Finley, having reached Lily and his son Travis, wrapped them in a grateful embrace. Thank you, Lily. Thank you for saving my boy. I can't express my gratitude enough. You're all covered in blood. I need to take you to the hospital right now. Lily, still in shock from the ordeal and not fully grasping her condition, brushed off his concern. No, I'm fine. It's just a scratch. You're going to get yourself bloody, she replied, underestimating the severity of her injury. Finley, understanding the gravity of the situation better than Lily in her shocked state, insisted firmly, Lily, quickly, get in the car. He cast aside any formalities in his urgency. The day, which had begun with laughter and anticipation, took an unexpected turn. Finley, Travis, and Lily ended up going to the hospital. Meanwhile, their colleagues, witnessing the alarming events, collectively decided against proceeding with their planned activities. They felt that continuing with their original plans for fun and relaxation would be incredibly insensitive given what had just transpired. Sandra, ever the antagonist, attempted to trivialize Lily's courageous act. She suggested that they shouldn't let Lily's injury disrupt their plans for fun. This time, however, her comments were met with visible disgust from most of her colleagues. What? Just because she's hurt, we all have to suffer too? It's not like we can do anything for her. That's the doctor's job, Sandra complained, her voice tinged with bitterness. The group slowly dispersed, many shaking their heads at her lack of empathy. Lily's injuries from the dog attack were more serious than she had initially thought. She had to endure stitches for the wounds on her arms and legs, along with a series of painful injections. While she was in the hospital, Finley and his son, Travis, visited her regularly, offering their support and company. One day, shortly before Lily was due to be discharged, Finley arrived with a special gift. He presented her with a beautifully wrapped box, bearing the company's logo. Lily... Travis and I wanted to give you this small token of our admiration for your bravery, he said warmly. Upon opening the package, Lily was so moved that she burst into tears. Inside was something she never expected. What's wrong, Lily? 
Finley asked, looking concerned. She was at a loss for words. It's just, I'm overwhelmed. I'm just a cleaner, and I don't know where I'd ever wear this, she managed to say through her tears. Travis, with the innocence of a child, came over and hugged her, saying, Don't cry, you can wear it to preschool. His comment brought a chuckle from Lily, lightening the mood. There you go, you can wear it to preschool, Finley joined in with a laugh. Upon her return to work, Lily was greeted with a challenging situation. Sandra had called in sick with the flu, leaving Finley without a secretary on a particularly busy day filled with important meetings. Finley attempted to call another temporary substitute, but she too was unavailable due to illness. The office was abuzz with the news of the flu outbreak, leaving several staff members out of commission, including Sandra. Finley, preoccupied with the day's important negotiations, was pondering his next move when he saw Lily, vacuum in hand, diligently attending to her cleaning duties. Lily, put that down. I need your help, he called out, a sense of urgency in his voice. Surprised, Lily stopped and looked at him questioningly. Do you need me to clean another area? She asked, ready to oblige. No, I need you to fill in for Sandra during today's negotiations, Finley explained, noticing her startled expression. Lily was taken aback. But I don't know anything about being a secretary. Don't worry, it's straightforward. Just assist with the paperwork as needed. It's a lot simpler than what you're used to, Finley reassured her a hint of confidence in his voice. He then glanced at her attire. After a quick briefing, my driver will take you home to change. That blue dress will be perfect for the occasion. Nervously agreeing to help, Lily requested, please don't be upset if I make a mistake. At home, after freshening up and doing her hair, Lily slipped into the blue dress. She approached the mirror and was taken aback by her reflection. The transformation was astonishing. She hardly recognized herself. Back at the office, Finley paced nervously, awaiting Lily's return and the arrival of the representatives for the crucial meeting. When Lily entered, confidently announcing her presence, Finley turned and was momentarily speechless. Before him stood not just his diligent janitor, but a poised, elegant woman. As the meeting commenced, Lily remained quiet, observing and listening. It was her first time in such a formal setting, but she quickly realized that the discussions were straightforward. As she followed the conversation, Lily found that she understood more than she expected. As the meeting neared its conclusion, with both parties poised to sign the contract, Lily's sharp eye caught a crucial oversight. Quickly, she scribbled a note and discreetly passed it to Finley. He glanced at it, his expression shifting from surprise to realization. Lily had pinpointed a significant detail that he had missed. With a subtle nod of thanks to her, he smoothly raised the point with the partners, seamlessly integrating it into the final discussions. After the meeting, Finley returned to the conference room, a look of admiration on his face. Lily, that was incredible. How did you catch that? He asked, genuinely impressed. Lily shrugged modestly. I just noticed you hadn't mentioned it and thought it was important. I was worried you might overlook it in the final moments, she explained, her smile reflecting her relief at having been helpful. Finley was thankful and suddenly asked her to dinner as a thank you. As they left the meeting room, Sandra showed up, out of breath. Seeing Lily in her fancy blue dress looking amazing made her very jealous. She was shocked that the meeting had ended and Lily was there. Feeling upset, she turned and walked away fast. Lily felt uneasy. She sensed that something might be happening between Finley and Sandra. During the drive, Lily inquired about Travis, surprising Finley with her thoughtfulness. They agreed to pick up Travis, making it a more casual and friendly outing. The dinner at a quiet, cozy restaurant was pleasant. Finley was curious about Lily's life, and she opened up about her past, her dreams of bringing her grandmother and sister to the city, and her aspirations. 
As the evening wore on, she revealed that her initial intention wasn't to work as a janitor, but to find a pathway into programming. Finley listened intently, deeply moved by her determination and resilience. As he drove her home, he couldn't shake a peculiar feeling that had settled in his heart. Her strength, her ambition, her kindness, all of it made him see Lily in a new light. Was he developing feelings for her? The thought both surprised and intrigued him. Lily's days continued as usual, but with a newfound sense of respect from her colleagues. Her act of bravery and the revelation of her personal story had earned her admiration. However, she couldn't bring herself to ask Finley for a different role within the company, feeling somewhat embarrassed about her true aspirations being known. One morning, Lily arrived at work to find an unusual change. Mr. Holland, the constant presence in the office, was nowhere to be seen. His absence was odd and unsettling. Her sense of unease grew when she discovered that the combination to her locker had been changed. Puzzled, Lily headed towards the hall, seeking answers. There, she saw a man she didn't recognize, dressed in a uniform similar to hers, mopping the floor with her mop. Assuming that the company had hired additional janitorial staff in anticipation of the office expansion, she approached him. Excuse me, sir, do you know why the locker combinations were changed? She inquired, trying to hide her confusion. The man paused his mopping and looked up, a look of surprise on his face. Change the lock combinations? No idea. They just gave me the code for this locker. And who are you? He asked, slightly perplexed. Lily, trying to maintain her composure, introduced herself. I'm Lily, another janitor here. Could you open the locker for me, please? He obliged, but when they opened it, the locker was empty. Lily's confusion deepened. Her locker had always been a small sanctuary for her personal items during work hours. The emptiness of it now felt like an ominous sign, and she couldn't help but wonder what was happening. As the office filled with people, Lily's eyes searched for Finley, but there was no sign of him. She inquired with her colleagues, but no one seemed to know his whereabouts. Feeling a bit lost, she decided to head home, planning to return the next day. The following morning, Lily allowed herself a bit more sleep, knowing that the new janitor would be there to cover her duties. However, her rest was interrupted by a knock at the door. Groggy and surprised, she opened it to find Finley standing there, a bouquet of wildflowers in hand and a warm smile on his face. Good morning, sunshine, he greeted cheerfully. Blinking away her sleepiness, Lily managed a smile full of questions. Finley gestured for her to step outside. As she did, the sight before her took her breath away. There was her sister, Julia, sitting in her wheelchair, her laughter like music in the air. A few feet away, her grandmother, Grace, was engaged in a lively chat with Mr. Holland, who offered his arm for her to lean on gracefully. Lily was overwhelmed, her heart swelling with emotion. It felt surreal, like a dream woven from her deepest desires. You deserve this, Lily. Your strength and resilience are inspiring, Finley said, his voice filled with admiration. It emerged that Mr. Holland had been a confidant not just to Lily, but to Finley as well. Like a father figure, Mr. Holland had provided wisdom and guidance to Finley over the years. When Finley had sought Mr. Holland's advice about Lily, the old security guard had smiled knowingly. The first time I saw Lily, I knew she was meant to play a significant role in your life, Finley, he had said. This revelation shed light on why Mr. Holland had specifically mentioned the janitorial job to Lily. Inspired by Mr. Holland's insights and Lily's story, Finley had made the decision to personally drive to her hometown to bring her grandmother and sister to the city. And for the challenging task of convincing Lily's grandmother, who better to rely on than the persuasive Mr. Holland? Tears of joy and disbelief brimmed in Lily's eyes as she embraced her grandmother and Julia. The reunion was filled with laughter, tears, and stories, bridging the distance that had separated them for so long. 
Finley organized a dinner at a quaint restaurant in the city, making sure to include everyone in the celebration. On their way, they picked up Travis from preschool. The young boy, with his infectious energy, immediately gravitated towards Lily, choosing to sit on her lap. Lily exchanged a meaningful glance with Finley, their eyes locking in a moment of shared affection and understanding. Lily, having cared for Julia since she was a child herself, had a natural warmth and affection for children. Travis seemed to sense this, comfortably nestling in her embrace, reluctant to move. As they drove to the restaurant, Lily gazed at her grandmother and Julia, her heart swelling with gratitude. The rapid changes in her life, the kindness she had encountered in Finley and Mr. Holland, filled her with a profound sense of thankfulness. At the restaurant, as they were enjoying their meals and moving on to desserts, Finley stood up to make an announcement. He addressed Lily's desire to be with her family and made a generous offer. I have a country house about half an hour from the city. It's yours if you want your family to move in, he proposed. Lily was overwhelmed by the offer, feeling a mix of gratitude and discomfort at such generosity. But Finley was insistent, his voice filled with sincerity. Lily, you've earned this and more. It's not just about you saving Travis, it's about who you are. The strength and love you've shown for your family is extraordinary. They deserve to be close to you, he said, his eyes conveying deep respect and admiration. Lily expressed her gratitude to Finley, insisting on paying rent once she started earning a regular salary. However, she would soon learn that Finley had no intention of accepting any rent from her. As time passed, the professional meetings between Lily and Finley gradually evolved into something more personal, blossoming into dates. They found joy in each other's company, often including little Travis in their outings for picnics and outdoor adventures. During these moments, Lily experienced a comforting warmth in her heart, a sense of belonging and happiness that was new to her. One day, while Lily was working at her computer, Finley entered her room with a sense of urgency. Lily, I'm not usually this forward, but I can't hold back anymore. I love you and I want to be with you, he confessed. Lily's face lit up with a genuine smile. I'm not much for grand romantic gestures either. I love you too, Finley. I want to be with you as well, she responded warmly. Lily, who had once focused solely on her family and survival, now found herself with everything she had ever dreamed of. A fulfilling job, a loving partner in Finley, and a joyful connection with Travis, who was like a son to her. In a delightful twist, Mr. Holland, who had been a constant support in Lily's life, found a new chapter in his own story. He retired from his job to spend more time with Grace, Lily's grandmother. Their bond grew strong, rooted in shared interests and companionship. Julia thrived in a school for special needs children, making remarkable progress and finding joy in her new environment. One peaceful evening, as Lily sat on the porch lost in thought, Julia wheeled up to her and embraced her silently. Overwhelmed with emotion, Lily felt tears well up in her eyes. She reflected on her journey, filled with trials and triumphs, and wondered what her parents would think if they could see her now. She hoped they would be as proud of her as she was of herself and her family.